back here with yeah. Representative Margo McNeil from the 69th District. So let's continue. In this segment, we're going to talk about education. Wonderful. Uh, something that's near and dear to your it heart. It is. I was a teacher in the Ferguson Florissant District for 22 years and a trustee for St. Louis Community College. I'm very um, passionate about education. Mm -hmm. Very good. You know, we talk about St. Louis Community College. You know what they call Flow Valley? I attended, but do you know, you know what they call I'm not it? sure that I do know what you're talking Harvard about. Harvard on the Highway. Oh, hey, <laughs> there we go. Kind of, there kind of we go. Kind of cool. <laughs> the, 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 the teachers I have had, the faculty uh, courses I've taken at the community college have been excellent. And uh, having been on the, the, the board of that univ uh, school, I, I, we are sending kids, I mean, they spend their two years there, and there are some students that are transferring to Washington University. So I, I think it's quite uh, apropos to say yeah. the Harvard of, I, on the highway. So. I, I graduated from there. Well, very one, good. One, See, one, yeah, wonderful a school. perfect example. And I also went to Washington U and yeah. UMSL and Maryville, and yeah. I got degrees from all three. There so we go. Hey, good education. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you're, you're basically on the elementary school level on the committee in Jefferson City, Elementary correct? and secondary, edu secondary education is the committee that I serve on. Okay, what does that committee do? We hear almost every education bill that has been filed in the Missouri House, or, or at least it's referred to the committee and the, co uh, the committee chair decides which ones that he, the, the committee will hear. Okay. And once it's once it passes the committee, what happens? I just kind of given a chronological. Right, a absolutely. Uh, it, it first mm -hmm. it is heard um, in committee, then uh, the committee chair decides which ones we will exec on, and we uh, uh, vote them out of committee or or not. Uh, once it gets out of committee, it goes to rules, which is pretty much uh, okay to send it on through to the floor. We vote on it on the, f uh, or de debate it and vote on the floor. If it passes, it goes to the Senate, goes to a Senate committee, they discuss it, they can add amendments to it. And by the way, amendments can be added in the committee or on the House floor. And uh, then the Senate pa committee passes it out to the floor of the Senate, they discuss it, amend it, it comes back, um, we approve the amendments or not, and then um, if there are different versions that the House pass and the Senate pass, there's a conference committee that comes together and decide which, which bill will actually, uh, which version of the bill will be agreed to by the, the whole committee, and then both the House and the Senate okay that version and it goes on to the governor's desk for his signature or veto. And this is about a three hour process? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, is it, this, this, what does it, it take roughly? Well, the whole process probably takes uh, several months uh, normally. And mm -hmm. so if you have a chance, if you want your bill to pass, you need to, I guess, get it discussed on the House floor if possible, um, or the Senate before uh, spring break, and we've yeah. already had mid-March. Unless it's a hot topic or something, right. you're, if it didn't come up before spring break, you yes, it's dead pretty much for the well, session. And, but that's but anything can be fast tracked by the speaker, mm -hmm. and so uh, sometimes these real controversial issues linger and they're talked about a lot, but they um, can be picked up and sh and allowed to go forward if leadership in the House and, and the Senate want it to go forward. So. Okay. As far as in the St. Louis area, we have two schools, yes. two school districts that are in distress. What is the legislature doing with the bills that have come up? Right. Well, uh, the Senate has, was, has been working very hard and they started this summer working on a bill that uh, are different bills that they thought would address the problem of our uh, schools. Currently, state law says that uh, an a student in an unaccredited district has the right to transfer to a school district in the same county or an adjoining county. And the, the really uh, important part 
the, there's another sentence that says, and the sending district, the unaccredited district, has to pay the tuition of that district and the uh, transportation. Normandy's um, school district and Riverview Gardens are around ten to twelve thousand dollars, but some of the districts in St. Louis County have twenty thousand dollar tuition rates. So the students that go from Normandy to either uh, to some of those districts are almost are costing the taxpayers in Normandy and Riverview Gardens twice what another student cost. And then that doesn't include the, well, actually I don't think they um, are, uh, the district pays transportation, transportation for them, uh, for students that go there. But it is bankrupting Normandy. Normandy by the end of April uh, would have been bankrupt except that the governor agreed to um, two million dollar, not the governor, um, the supplemental budget agreed to provide them with some more right money to get them through the end of the year. <clears throat> but come next August, they're going to be in the same predicament. Right, and that is, so that is the urgency that we have of getting something passed, because if we can pass something that um, makes it possible for these unaccredited districts to survive financially and can uh, be uh, set up rules and um, guidance, I guess, for the receiving districts, ascending districts. Um, and then, in my opinion, uh, a bill needs to have resources for the unaccredited districts so that they can regain accreditation. And so, um, but so if we can, we do need to get some kind of a bill passed that changes that law so that these uh, unaccredited districts don't go bankrupt. And Kansas City will start transferring students next fall if we, you know, uh, and, and we'll need a law in place as well because they'll have twice as many students as Normandy and Riverview Gardens combined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like the ideal situation would be to get the other schools accredited, get their quality mm -hmm. up and so on, that mm -hmm. you could, you know, you could educate the students in the areas that they live in. Right. You don't want to spend all day riding on a bus, that's for right. sure. Right. It's a long bus ride for those children. It, it also undermines the schools that they come out of. And in my opinion, the way to fix these schools is to... Um, increase funding for parents as teachers, also uh, have preschool education, in, particularly in these struggling distri districts, and to extend the learning time in the districts. And um, some of my belief comes from my working in ferguson Florissant. Uh, in ferguson Florissant, we had four four of our 17 elementary schools that were underperforming by about 20, 25 points, the st uh, state, uh, under, state level. And uh, so this, the school board decided to extend the school year for four of those schools an extra five weeks. They did that and it didn't happen right away, but within about five years, test scores in those four uh, uh, poor achieving schools were within four points of the state average. So it made a, a huge improvement in the uh, achievement of those students. And, and to me that shows that if kids have more, a little more time, they can learn. Mm -hmm. And because th those kids are smart, they just um, maybe have had an educational career where they move from school to school or have had some other you know, difficulties in their life and haven't been able to learn. Yeah, I was reading the other day, they have a proposal that they're looking at the schools individually now, not as a group. And that does make sense in that probably, you know, it's kind of like, I, I would, my looking at the way I would reference it is, some places you work, you have a boss that's real good I mean, an yeah. outstanding boss and everybody performs well. You work in another place and you have a boss that does not perform as well. And it just keeps degrading as that boss, as you keep, right. you know, as that boss stays on. So I assume the same thing happens in, you know, in, in schools. You may have an administrator that's not on the top of their game. 
you know, the uh, leadership in a school building is really important. Uh, they they kind of set the tone and and uh, and help working with teachers. So that is really important. But I think the other thing that's important for uh, for our listening audience and you to know is that most all the schools that are underachieving are in. Are, have educating a lot of high poverty children, uh, and so it's it's also an issue of um, the challenges that are being faced by the by children who maybe um, have are moving a lot because their parents can't pay the rent, or maybe they're um, uh, in in uh, kind of dangerous areas, and uh, or or they haven't had. Um, preschool or some of the other advantages that children in, in wealthier districts have had. And uh, so, so there are some other circumstances. I'm a big proponent of uh, preschool education. And one of the reasons is um, there are studies that show that, uh, first of all, brain development is a huge amount of brain development takes place from zero to six years of age. and. Um, there was a Kansas City study that looked at different families from different economic areas. They found that the uh, uh, professionals, fa children in prof families of your doctors and lawyers, heard 30 million more words than a child from an impoverished family in those first f five or six years. 30 million words. And when you look at brain development, a kid who's heard a lot of vocabulary, who knows a lot of different words when they start kindergarten, is going to be at a, a start off better. And, and so preschool education, particularly in our uh, low achieving districts, I think would make a big difference. Is in the two districts we're talking about, Normandy and Riverview, do they have a lot of preschool education or yeah, I you know I've you talked know? with uh, uh, some community members and the superintendent down in Normandy. I think they have um, about a hundred other students in a preschool program of some kind. I don't know if they have it sponsored by the the school itself. Uh, they they are working with some of the um, child care centers there in the Normandy area to try and make sure that they have you know quality teachers and that they, uh, you know, and they're trying to coordinate that and, and make the most of the private daycare that they're, and child care. But mm -hmm. they, they're, they could use, they definitely um, could, could use a, a much more help with uh, preschool education, particularly quality preschool. Do you think they will ever increase the school year, the length of the school year? When I went to high school and so on, we didn't get out till mid-June. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you probably now didn't they're cutting start, back. To, yeah. It, well, we of, actually started earlier than what they do now. Well, now, I you think. know, we're starting in the middle of August. And when my kids were in school, when they first yes. started, we started after Labor Day. Yeah, that's what we usually first After, after Labor, Labor Day. Day. And then we did go until like the 10th of June. Mm -hmm. But um, because of the testing, uh, schools have, are starting earlier, like mid August so that they can get more learning time in before they take the tests in April. And then after the tests are over at the end of April, they've got maybe three weeks until school's out. And mm -hmm. uh, schools felt that that would be a better use of their time um, because pretty much after tests are taken in the spring, kids check out and you know, they, they're, and, and it gets, the weather gets so nice that they don't wanna do anything. You know, they're not as focused do on learning. On testing, yeah. do the teachers teach subjects or do they teach tests or do you know? Well, all, all teachers teach subject, the content, they do. But we do also, and, and when in the building that I was in in Ferguson Florissant, we um, would practice a, a question that was similar to what they might get on the test so that kids would, won't be thrown by you know, answering a, this type of question, or they'll be familiar with voc uh, vocabulary in the directions, or, or what to look for, you know, either or, or 
little kinds of things like that. And um, we also would do a mad math minute every day before school started. And so kids would do computation for a minute every day to practice those skills that they needed for the test taking. So, so there, are, there are skills involved with taking tests. Okay. And kids have to learn those, but, but the, the majority of the time that I was spent on, on teaching, but you also did focus on what you were tested on. Sounds I good. mean, you know, that kind of thing. So. Okay. Well, as we wrap up here, I have one final question. All right. And I ask every guest this question. All right. Where'd you go to high school? You know, I went to Hannibal High School. Okay. So I kind of am out of the norm of the St. Louis thing, but uh, I... It was a Hannibalian until I moved here uh, 35 years ago. So okay, well that's in the state of Missouri. It so is what in the, the heck, state of right? Missouri. I'm Missouri born and bred. You bet. Very good. So. Well, thank you, Mark. That's you. been very interesting. I I'm sure the viewers are going to get a lot out of this particular show. Well, I appreciate the invitation to, to to join you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for watching this evening. If you have any questions for me, you can contact me at www.cityofblackjack.com or call me at area code 314-355-0400. Representative McNeil's information has been up on the web as we've been going along through the show here. Thank you for watching. Good evening.